This racist cop pulls over a black police captain. When he finds out who he is, he turns pale. Officer Justice was driving along the highway on a quiet afternoon, and he was feeling the boredom of yet another routine patrol. His rookie partner, Trooper Gomez, sat in the passenger seat, silently observing. As they cruised down the highway, a sleek black car caught Justice's eye. It wasn't speeding, but something about it made Justice sit up in his seat. The car was moving at a steady 70 miles per hour in a zone where the speed limit was 80. It wasn't breaking any laws, but Officer Justice saw it as a perfect opportunity. He signaled to Gomez to turn on the lights. They were going to pull the car over. Trooper Gomez hesitated for a moment. He looked at the speedometer and then back at the car. The car wasn't even going fast. He cautiously asked Justice why they were stopping the vehicle when it wasn't even close to speeding. But Officer Justice hushed him quietly and gave him the usual look of irritation. He repeated the instruction but more firmly this time, leaving no room for argument. Gomez had no choice but to obey, even though he knew what was really going on. As a rookie, he felt powerless to challenge the senior officer, even as his gut told him that the only reason Justice had chosen that car was because the driver was black. Gomez was eager to learn, but he was still unsure of many police practices, especially profiling. That was why he was assigned to Officer Justice. Justice had been on the force for years, and while he had a reputation as a tough cop, there were rumors about him circulating within the department. Gomez had heard whispers that Justice was racist, but he'd never seen it firsthand. Little did Trooper Gomez know that he would witness it in full that day. The black car pulled over to the side of the road, and Officer Justice just couldn't hide his smirk. As the officer approached the vehicle, he whistled softly as he took note of the luxury and shine of the car. It was the kind of car he knew he could never afford on a cop's salary, and the fact seemed to irritate him even more. How could a black man be driving such an expensive car? The thought of it made him angry, and it fueled his already deep-seated biases. Once at the front of the car, Justice motioned for the driver to lower his window. The man behind the wheel did so, and he could see that it was a middle-aged black man dressed in plain clothes. The man's forehead was damp with sweat, and he looked really agitated. Despite the look, the man calmly asked the officers why they'd pulled him over. He was in a hurry, but he knew he hadn't been speeding. But Justice wasn't interested in the man's explanation. Instead, he looked at the driver with suspicion. This wasn't about the speed limit, and both men knew it. Justice had a reputation in the department, one that wasn't openly discussed but was well understood. Justice was prejudiced against minorities, particularly against black people, and today he saw no reason to hide it. The man's hands were visible on the steering wheel, and he pointed toward his driver's license and registration sitting in the glove compartment. He was following the rules and was ready to cooperate fully with the cops. But that didn't move Officer Justice one bit. He ignored the man's offered documents and instead demanded to know why he was speeding, even though the driver had clearly stated he knew he was under the limit. The driver began by introducing himself as Luke. He then calmly repeated that he was in a hurry due to an emergency involving his daughter. She'd been in an accident at home, and with her mother out of town, he was the only one who could get to her quickly. His voice was steady, but his hands were shaky. Any parent would be anxious in such a situation. However, Justice seemed to be completely deaf to Luke's words. His mind was already made up. He saw the sweat on Luke's face, the nervousness in his voice, and his shaky hands as signs of guilt rather than concern. Officer Justice wasn't interested in the truth. He was interested in finding a reason, any reason, to justify his prejudice. Without bothering to check the license or registration, he told Luke to step out of the car. He gave the order in a harsh tone that left no room for argument. Luke was taken aback by the harshness of the demand. He knew he hadn't done anything wrong, but here he was, being treated like a criminal. But Luke knew better. He had to remain calm. 
He took a deep breath to maintain his composure and asked the officer what he had done wrong. But Justice's tone only grew harsher. He shouted, Get out of the car, boy! This was a statement that was loaded with condescension and racism. As Luke started back at him in shock, Justice threatened to arrest him if he didn't comply immediately. By now, Luke realized that resisting would only escalate the situation further, so he unbuckled his seatbelt and stepped out of the car. Luke kept his hands visible, as he didn't give the aggressive cop any reason to act violent. Justice stepped up to the black man and began to question him, aggressively. He asked the questions rapidly, like he was interrogating an enemy prisoner. Where are you coming from? Where are you going? Where do you get this car? Luke repeated that he was rushing to see his daughter and he explained the whole situation once more. But Justice wasn't even listening. Instead, his thoughts were fixated on the car. How could this black man afford such a vehicle? The idea that Luke might have stolen it was all Justice could think about. Luke sensed the direction this encounter was heading and he told Justice that the car was his. He urged the officer to check his license and registration, which were still in the glove compartment, and to run his plates. Doing those things would have cleared up any doubts in seconds, but Justice ignored the suggestion. He didn't like being told what to do, especially not by a black man. The cop haughtily told Luke to be quiet and let him do his job. He should be grateful he wasn't being arrested on the spot. Luke wanted to argue and assert his rights, but he held back. He could see that Justice was looking for a reason to escalate things, and he didn't want to give him the satisfaction. Instead, he remained calm and kept his emotions in check. But Justice wasn't that smart. He misinterpreted Luke's silence as submission and smiled to himself. He thought he'd finally put Luke in his place. With a sense of superiority, Justice demanded that Luke step aside so he could search the vehicle. He was determined to find something, anything, that would justify his treatment of Luke. The situation was getting even more tense, but Luke remained calm. He knew that losing his temper would only make things worse. He could see the eagerness in Justice's eyes and his anticipation of finding something incriminating. But Luke also knew there was nothing to find. The car was legally his, and everything about it was in order. As Officer Justice moved toward the car, Gomez stayed in the patrol vehicle, watching the scene unfold. He could see that Justice was overstepping his bounds, but he was too intimidated to intervene. As a rookie, he'd been taught to follow orders, not to question them, and Justice was a senior officer. Gomez found it ironic that he'd been eager when he was assigned to Justice to learn the ropes, but he quickly realized that Justice wasn't the type of mentor he'd hoped for. From the start, Justice made it clear that he didn't appreciate having a Gomez as his partner. He always referred to him in a condescending tone, and he didn't even bother to hide his disdain. Justice's attitude made Gomez feel more like a nuisance than a fellow officer. Justice treated him like a buzzing fly, something to be swatted away or ignored, rather than someone to be trained. Justice began his rough search of the car, while Luke stood by silently. He didn't know that this would go this far, but he was determined to get through it without losing his composure. He knew that how he handled this moment could determine not just the outcome of this encounter, but also the future of the two cops who'd stopped him. Justice continued his search, completely unaware of the consequences his actions were about to unleash. Luke stood by the side of the road and watched in frustration as Justice rifled through his car. He could clearly see the officer's bias in every rough movement and every suspicious glance. The cop didn't even glance at the license and registration Luke had pointed out earlier. Instead, he focused on tearing the car apart. When the cop started pulling at the seats as if he expected to find something hidden there, Luke finally spoke up. He told the officer to be more careful and respect his property. Justice froze for a moment, as if he didn't believe what he just heard. He then turned to Luke with a look of pure anger. Justice didn't like being told what to do, especially not by a black man. In his mind, Luke's calm request was nothing but arrogance and a subtle challenge to his authority. Officer Justice snapped back at Luke and told him that he'd had enough of his attitude. He was now under arrest. Gomez was shocked as he heard the words. 
under arrest? For what? But again, he said nothing as Justice pulled out his handcuffs and moved towards Luke. The decision to arrest him wasn't based on any crime, but a way to assert dominance and put Luke in his place. Luke didn't resist, but as Justice approached, he quietly warned the officer to be careful. He might end up regretting what he was doing. But this warning only increased to Justice's temper. He took Luke's words as a threat, and without hesitation, he roughly grabbed Luke and threw him against the car. He began to pat him down with unnecessary force, searching for anything that might justify the arrest he was determined to make. This was when Luke's phone began to ring. The sound caught Justice's attention. He glanced over to see the screen lighting up with an incoming call. Without even checking who it was, Justice picked up the phone and tossed the phone back into the car. The ringing stopped as the phone hit the seat. Justice then returned to dragging Luke toward the patrol car, where Gomez was still watching with growing discomfort. As Justice pulled him along, Luke lost his patience. He had tried to stay calm and de-escalate the situation, but it was clear that Officer Justice wasn't interested in anything other than humiliating him. So Luke finally spoke up and asked Justice if he knew who he was dealing with. But Justice didn't respond to what he thought was a stupid question. He just kept dragging Luke toward the patrol car with a look of satisfaction on his face. When Luke saw that Justice wasn't listening, he got angry. Stop this nonsense! Lieutenant Summers! Luke shouted. I tell you, Chief Harris would have your hide. The name caught Justice off guard. He froze, and his grip on Luke's arm loosened as he processed what he'd just heard. Justice turned to Luke with a look of confusion and asked him to repeat what he just said. Luke then dropped a bombshell. He told Justice that he was a police officer, introducing himself as Captain Luke Stanford. For a moment, Justice thought Luke was lying. It wouldn't be the first time someone tried to talk their way out of trouble by pretending to be someone they weren't. But something in Luke's tone, especially the calm authority in his voice, made Justice hesitate. He demanded to see some identification, but this time, his voice lacked the confidence and arrogance that it had earlier. Without a word, Luke reached into his car's glove compartment, pulled out his badge and ID. He handed it over to Justice, who took it with a shaking hand. As the cop read the name on the badge, he turned pale. It was real. Captain Luke Stanford. Just as he'd said. And Luke wasn't just any captain. He was one with a reputation that preceded him. Luke was known throughout the department, not just for his rank, but for his work in internal affairs. Back then, he'd made a name for himself by rooting out corruption and misconduct among officers. Justice realized to his horror that he just handcuffed one of the most respected and feared officers in the department. Gomez was still in the car, watching as the realization dawned on Justice. He could see the fear creeping into the senior officer's eyes, as well as the way his hands trembled as he held the ID. Justice knew that he had made a grave mistake, one that could end his career. He'd crossed a line and there was no going back. Officer Justice slowly turned back to Luke, who was watching him with an expression that was hard to read. There was no anger in Luke's eyes. Instead, the captain gave the cop a calm look that made Justice feel even smaller. The tables had turned completely and Justice knew it. He immediately began to fumble with the handcuffs to unlock them, but his hands were shaky. The cop stammered out an apology, but he knew it was too little too late. Luke remained silent and just kept watching as Justice finally freed him from the cuffs. The damage was done and Justice knew that there would be consequences for his actions. Consequences that he couldn't escape. He'd handcuffed and mistreated a police captain without any just cause. Desperate to salvage the situation, Justice tried to backtrack and downplay what had just happened. He stammered that he'd only been overly cautious, so his actions were just a mere case of misunderstanding. But his excuses fell flat. Luke was now free from the handcuffs, and it was clear that the captain was no longer willing to tolerate any of Justice's behavior. He demanded that Justice explain why he'd chosen to profile and harass him without any valid reason. Justice tried to offer another weak apology, but the captain cut him off. There was no way to undo what he'd done. At that moment, Trooper Gomez finally gathered the courage to step out of the patrol car. 
He was panicking, and he knew that the fallout of the situation could affect him and his career. Gomez approached the two men to find a way to calm things down, but it was clear that the situation had escalated beyond repair. Captain Luke turned to Gomez and instructed him to call their superior officers immediately. There was no room for argument. The young officer could see that the captain meant business. Gomez quickly grabbed his radio and made the call. Justice could only stand by and watch as he saw his career of nine years hanging by a thread. He'd crossed a line, and there was no easy way out of this mess. The minutes ticked by slowly as they waited for the superior officers to arrive. Justice could feel the weight of his actions bearing down on him, and he knew that the outcome would not be in his favor. When the two superior officers finally arrived at the scene, their expressions turned from confusion to shock as they saw Captain Luke standing there. They recognized him immediately and knew that something serious had occurred. Luke wasted no time in explaining what had transpired. He detailed how he'd been rushing to see his daughter who'd been in an accident when he was pulled over by Justice. Luke had initially thought it would be a quick pullover and he even had considered telling him he was a police captain to avoid any delays. But when he saw Justice's behavior, his mind flashed back to the officer's file, which he'd come across during his work in internal affairs. In the file, Luke had read reports that Officer Justice exhibited racist behaviors, so he decided to play along to confirm his suspicions. Unfortunately, Justice had lived up to his reputation and displayed his full racist and unprofessional behavior without a second thought. He profiled and harassed Luke based solely on his race, and the situation had quickly escalated into a misuse of power. The superior officers listened with all seriousness, and their faces grew pale with each detail. They were appalled by what they were hearing. Once Luke finished speaking, the superior officers turned to Justice. They informed him that he was immediately relieved of his duties pending an internal investigation. Justice's face turned even paler. He opened his mouth as if to protest, but no words came out. He knew that there was no defending his actions. The reality of his situation sank in, and he knew that his nine-year career in law enforcement was likely over. The consequences of his behavior had finally caught up with him. As the superior officers escorted Justice away, Luke turned back to his car. The situation had been tense and frustrating, but he felt a sense of justice as he prepared to leave the scene. He knew that his actions had sent a clear message. Racism and misuse of power had no place in law enforcement. The system had its flaws, but he was determined to be a part of the solution, even if it meant holding his own colleagues accountable. Gomez watched as the captain drove away, heading off to see his daughter. He was relieved that the situation had been resolved, but he also had a lingering sense of unease. He'd seen firsthand how easily bias and prejudice could influence someone's actions, even within the police force. Officer Justice had probably given him the most important lesson he could possibly receive. He knew that this incident would stay with him for a long time to remind him of the importance of standing up against wrongdoing, no matter how difficult it might be. In the following days, Justice faced disciplinary action and he was finally dismissed from the force. His career in law enforcement was over thanks to his own racist actions. Trooper Gomez, on the other hand, was reassigned to a different unit and he was encouraged to report any similar behavior in the future. The department knew that it was essential to root out any signs of racism or misuse of power to restore trust within the community. Captain Luke Stanford reflected on the incident and he realized that even with his rank and experience, he was not immune to the prejudice that many black men faced daily. But by standing up to it, he'd made a difference in the fight against systemic racism. He knew that the road ahead was long, but he was determined to continue his work to ensure that justice and equality were upheld in every corner of the department. What a story! What would you do if you were in Luke's shoes? Share your thoughts in the comments. See you in the next video.